All right, so that was an awesome, awesome lunch. But guys, now what we're visiting is really, really cool, super significant here in Nagasaki, Japan. And I think you guys will also find this extremely, extremely fascinating. Check it out. It's so big. Look at this statue. Guys, check it out, it's massive. Undergoing renovations, so there's scaffolding, but I think you guys will be mind blown when you hear about the statue and the context of this statue. The statue is 9.7 meters high. 9.7 meters high. And it weighs 30 tons, three zero tons. 30 tons? <gasps> What's it made of? Oh my. Okay guys, this is Nami, our awesome tour guide. Thank you. For those of you who are just joining us, my name is Mikey Bustos, welcome to the channel. We're here in Nagasaki, Japan. Unbelievable. Be sure to hit that like button and also subscribe to join our family. Yes, if it feels right. Okay guys, so here, get this. This statue is significant because Nagasaki happens to be the site in World War II where they dropped a nuclear bomb, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay, so the most famous obviously is Hiroshima, right? But apparently the most devastating site of the nuclear bomb happened here in Nagasaki. They dropped the bomb here too and it was more devastating, more powerful of an explosion than in Hiroshima. So obviously a lot of people died and they built this statue to console the victims. <gasps> Wow, did you guys know that? I only heard about Hiroshima in history class, but apparently another, also another one was dropped in Nagasaki, here, where we're standing. Okay, wait, so there is no more nuclear radiation around no, don't today. No, okay. No okay, okay, okay. No. <laughs> Just check. So the right hand is pointing to the sky to represent the atomic bomb. The left hand extended to the side represents peace. This entire park is called Peace Park to represent that it's all over. Mm -hmm. See that? Every year the mayor of Nagasaki has a ceremony here right in front of the statue and delivers a speech. On the day that the bomb was dropped? Yeah. <gasps> wow. The 9th of August, 1945. The 9th of August. 1945. Wow guys, origami. So they believe that when 1,000 cranes are folded out of paper that your wish will come true. See that? Oh my. Atomic bomb exploded 500 meters above the ground. Oh. Which is about the same, same wow. height as that oh. mountain. Oh wow, oh my gosh, okay, Mabuhai squad. When the atomic bomb was dropped here in Nagasaki, the explosion was as tall as that mountain, 500 meters. Oh wow, that's crazy. All right guys, as is Mabuhai squad tradition, we're gonna buy a magnet to remember this uh, visit to Nagasaki. Oh, so many good magnets. Hmm, we got it Mabuhai squad, yes, Nagasaki, Japan. All right guys, so this park, that you see here is ground zero of the atomic bomb. This is where it was dropped. That just blows my mind, guys. Seriously, in World War II, the Americans dropped an atomic bomb here that exploded 500 meters into the sky. Like, that's how huge this bomb was. This all makes me think that like you know it reminds me that there's always two sides to a story right because growing up in Canada we only heard the Canadian American side right like I mean that narrative and how you know Japan was kind of the was the enemy really but like innocent people died on the Japan side too you know it just makes you think like we were the enemies to them. Beautiful flowers. Look at all of these origami cranes. See that? All of these were hand folded. Wow. So guys, this entire atrium is a time machine. You see? 2000, 1995. Oh, going back in time, 1990, RJ was born here, <laughs> and I was born somewhere here, yeah, yes, 
<laughs> Please. Don't act like you you are much older than Mike me. Mike is actually born 19... By... 1970. My... <laughs> Whatever. Young at heart. Look at all these creams folded. Wow. Okay, we're at 1960s now. See that? Getting to like around the birth of my parents. Oh, 1950 and 1945. Oh, wow. What a cool concept. I like that. You can visually see how long ago that was. Okay. His name is Mr. Yoshiro Yamawaki. Mr. Yoshiro, Yoshiro Yamawaki. Yamawaki. Like an actual survivor. Mabu High Squad, it is a great honor to introduce you guys to Mr. Yoshiro Yamawaki. Good afternoon, sir. Um, so he's gonna take us through a presentation of his experience of the atomic bomb. Wow, okay. What lies with the United States and Britain? M many Japanese believed uh, Japan would carry out a victory. Japan is a land of God from the time we were young then. The war was still going on when I entered the sixth grade, and it was during summer vacation of that year that the atomic bomb was dropped on Nagasaki. Oh no, your English was great. Thank you so much, Mr. Yamawaki. That was amazing. Thank you so much, Mr. Yamawaki, for that sharing. Um, that was really moving. And you've been very brave. You won't believe the, what he just told us. He went into so much detail about what happened when they dropped the bomb in Nagasaki. And it just blew my mind. It gave me goosebumps. I was, I, want, I was about to cry. Okay, so get this. So this is what happened. So the war started when he was in grade two, okay? And you know, in Japan, they were told that Japan is the land of God. So they were going to win this war. So the war continued up until he was in grade six when he was 11 years old and there were attacks on Nagasaki. So his mom took some of his younger siblings and fled to another city. Mr. Yamawaki and he, he has a twin brother and his other brother and dad stayed. So the morning they dropped the bomb, there was a massive explosion, right? The father was at work in a factory 
and the only reason Mr. Yamawaki and his brother survived was because they were inside the house at the back of the house and on the outskirts of where you know the explosion um, happened 70,000 people died guys like basically imagine all the people in a stadium and multiply that by like seven that's how many people died kids were riding bikes they died from either the explosion or the heat from the explosion or or debris because like apparently a it caused a lot of debris to fly through the air and like pieces shards of glass were like raining on people you know what i mean like these were just innocent people who are being affected by this so then mr yamawaki imagine as this 11 year old boy with his twin and his brother want they were waiting for their dad to come home they like didn't know what happened, right? They had seen that there was this huge mushroom cloud of an explosion into the sky, you know, so they set off to the factory, which happened to be near the epicenter where the atomic bomb was dropped. So as they're going, they're seeing dead bodies everywhere, some floating in the river, and oh my gosh, the, one of the biggest things he said to me that like, my imagination, right, it's so active, he said that they used their feet to touch these bodies and the skin peeled off like an overripe peach. <gasps> Can you imagine? They saw a boy on the ground. They thought that he had thrown up and died throwing up noodles. But no, those were roundworms. Like even the, in, even the parasites in the intestines of these people, they came out of the human bodies because the body was just scorched from heat or whatever. OMG, like some of the gruesome details he went into, like it traumatized me. Can you imagine an 11 year old boy? So they're on their way to this factory, buildings level to the floor. And the closer they're getting to this factory of their dad, the more like everything is singed and covered in dust and you know, more dead bodies. So they're realizing now that the factory was near the place they dropped the bomb. They eventually found their dad who had died and was just like burned. So these kids were like, okay, so what do we do now? And it was recommended to them um, to either carry the, the bones or the remains, the, the body of their dad home, which they couldn't do. So they decided to cremate their dad there. Can you imagine they had to cremate their dad on location and after the cremation which took all night the dad still wasn't fully cremated and just oh the, the details was were just crazy then he went on to talk about how you know the world has no idea how devastating nuclear weapons are they're very cruel and he also informed us that there are hundreds of bombs that are much more powerful than the atomic bomb that was dropped in Nagasaki and Hiroshima here in Japan by the Americans. There are, today, there are currently weapons of mass destruction that are much more powerful than the atomic bomb from World War II. It's crazy. And like this whole climate now of like, you know, civil war in different countries, right? You know, after 9-11, it's really concerning. Like there should really, he was saying that if only the world knew how devastating these weapons of mass destruction are, we would all be unified at like <laughs> making sure they're all gone. You know what I mean? It's just from the earth. It's just not, it's so cruel and, and very dangerous. But wow, this talk with him has been really, really mind-blowing. So him, Mr. Yamawaki and his two brothers have been victims of cancer. He currently is a cancer survivor. He had stomach cancer um, and was operated on. He survived it. Um, and his two brothers as well had cancer. People who have uh, died from these atomic bombs explosion either died from the blast, like literally were there when it exploded, or from the heat that, kind of, I mean, when a bomb hits, the entire area pretty much turns into like an incinerator, like the heat lingers, it stays. And so people were burned by the heat or they died of, from the radiation afterwards. Anyway, this entire thing has been just completely mind blowing to me. And again, 
it's the other narrative, right? From the Jap Japan side. I mean, as a Canadian, a narrative I didn't hear. And now I understand why every time, you know our vlogs when we visit uh, World War II um, sites like Corregidor Island and in season one, we visited the um, war site uh, in Palau, right? They have usually two tours. They've got the Japan tour and they've got the other, the international tour, the American tour, um, because both narratives are, are very different, right? Wow, Mahbu High Squad, mind blown by this. RJ, what did you think of that talk? I felt sad. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. And that is only one story among all the stories of the survivor. I know hundreds and thousands of stories, I'm sure. It just, wow. All right, guys, so there's something I really need right now um, and you can pretty much get it anywhere in Japan and this is something I personally love and like I said, I'm extremely needing right now. Okay, let's not get run over by cars. <laughs> My boy squad, what I'm getting right now is this.